Every single day that Abiy Ahmed clings to power, Ethiopia spirals further into chaos with no foreseeable path to recovery. His war crimes and sheer incompetence have rendered him a pariah on the global stage, isolated, discredited and unwanted. In a desperate bid to hold on to power, Abiy has aligned himself with shady actors, bending to the whims of vulture capitalists and implementing policies dictated by these predatory forces. He has reduced Ethiopia to nothing more than a pawn for the UAE, global corporations and corrupt entities that pillage and exploit the nation without a shred of accountability. Recently, he's recklessly opened Ethiopia's market with no planning, debate or oversight. Ethiopians are poorer than ever before. The Prime Minister Dr. Abiy Ahmed, Zare, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, like a member of Baladara, Yehunutin, Bill Gates, and Takabelar. Ka Oromia Kalila, the Summer Stadad, Shemel Sabdi Sagar, Bemohunim, Yetopia, Bemgibras Nimachal. The Europeans have decided they don't want to use it, most of them, which is fine. They're not facing malnutrition and starvation. If they want to pay a premium for food of a kind, it, it, it's not a huge deal. The Africans, I think, will choose uh, to let their people have, have enough to eat. Bill Gates and his foundation are deeply invested in a host of ethically troubling undertakings, pushing the boundaries of ethics and morality. His aggressive promotion of gene editing, bioengineering and food technology reeks of unchecked power and corporate greed. Gates pours money into CRISPR and GMO crop research, manipulating the food supply for profit. His investment in lab-grown livestock and genetically modified mosquitoes are potential risks to ecosystems. So, Yanam my fellow Guayloch, Batalayam and get Dakota to first and count better. Then we go to the Chelsea Coast, the Asakana. Then we get to the Kitamata, Dibaza, then we get to Amat Jamro, coach Yemigabu Rdatauch, now Saginal and Menelbet and Gizzi. In 2024, Abiy Ahmed publicly declared that Ethiopia has achieved food self sufficiency. Meanwhile, Ethiopia's international partners were at the United Nations in Geneva, desperately seeking funds to expand food aid to 10.4 million people and provide life-saving assistance to 15.5 million. The Ethiopian foreign minister was there too. The pathological liar prime minister deceived the public about how he would achieve food self-sufficiency. Rather than being upfront, he lied by omission failing to disclose that the so-called self-sufficiency relies on genetically modified crops and poultry. Literally, the entire population is being used as guinea pigs for GMO experiments without their knowledge. Abi Ahmed and Oromo President Shaimales have been parading videos and photos of farms and poultry operations, deceitfully presenting them as triumphs of the Oromo Prosperity Party. The fact is, those farms are owned by Bill Gates for his experiments with genetically modified crops. Abiy cynically uses these images and Gates' operations as propaganda, misleading the public into believing that Ethiopia is making substantial agricultural strides and has become self-sufficient, no longer needing to import or receive aid from foreign country. Although Bill Gates' projects in Ethiopia began during the TPLF years, their scale has accelerated significantly since Abiy Ahmed took power. Foundation, 
بيلغيتس ك2010 متمرت بوالا ك2010 متمرت بوالا فاونديشنو لزلاج بيلغيتس ك2010 ك2010 متمرت بوالا فاونديشنو جمرنا هون ثلاث عامات من وانني علامه Ethiopians have been used as unwitting subjects in Gates' experimental bioengineered and gene-edited crops and livestock. Decisions on these projects are made unilaterally by Abbey and the Oromo Prosperity Party, with no public debate or expert consultation regarding the long-term impacts. This has all been conducted in secrecy, with the public kept in the dark. Recently, there has been a surge in cancer cases in Ethiopia, raising concerns about a possible correlation with GMOs, though the exact cause remains unknown. Bill Gates is giving away a bunch of chickens, but it turns out Bolivia doesn't love that gift. ዶሮስ አይሆን ሽንኩርት ነው ምበላው ሽንኩርት ውስጥ ትንሽ ዶሮ ጨምረን ከዛ ዶሮ በላ እንላለን እንጂ ፕራይመሪ ይበላው ሽንኩርት ነው ማይክሮሶፍት ቢል ጌትስ አናውንስ ዲሪንግ ዲስ ዊክ ሂ ዋዝ ዲስትሪቢዩቲንግ 100000 ቺኪንስ ቱ ፖር ኮንትሪስ አስ ፓርት ኦፍ አ ፕሮጀክት ቱ ኢራዲኬት ፖቨርቲ ባይ ጊቪንግ አዌይ ላይፍ ስቶክ አንድ አግሪኮልቸራል ትሬኒንግ ኦን ዘ ሊስት ቱ ሪሲቭ ዘ ቺኪንስ ወር አ ነምበር ኦፍ ኮንትሪስ ኢን ሳብ ሳሃራን አፍሪካ አንድ ቦሊቪያ አንድ ዋት ዲድ ቦሊቪያ ሳይ ቱ ዚስ ጀነረስ ኦፈር ቱ ፎርጌት አባውት ኢት Bolivia immediately rejected the offer, describing... Abi and the utterly incompetent Oromo prosperity officials are hopelessly clueless, devoid of even the most basic decency, morality and intelligence. Their sheer indifference to the catastrophic long-term fallout of their reckless experiments is sickening. They've lied to the public, flooding TV and social media with deceptive propaganda videos about their so-called innovations in crops and chickens. The reality? Everything they're pushing is genetically modified or bioengineered. If the Ethiopians don't rise up and put a stop to this, nothing will deter him from pursuing his own, his own selfish goals to maintain his power, forging global networks with shady actors at the expense of Ethiopia. Many developing countries have been resisting Gates' efforts to use them as test subjects for GMOs. Most of these nations support open public debate by subject matter experts. In Ethiopia, however, Decisions affecting 120 million people are made solely by Abiy Ahmed and the Oromo Prosperity Party. Bill Gates, through his foundation, is aggressively pushing for more corporate control over agriculture, threatening the independence of small farmers in developing nations who could become dependent on patented GMO seeds from big corporations. There are serious worries about the environmental damage GMOs could cause, such as harm to ecosystems, loss of biodiversity, and issues with the sustainability of genetically engineered crops. The excessive use of pesticides also raises red flags. Health risks from long-term consumption of these foods are not fully understood, and there are ethical concerns about manipulating genetic material for profit, which many believe disrupts natural principles and could lead to unpredictable outcomes. Moreover, Gates's GMO projects face criticism for a lack of transparency, with accusations that his influence over research and development lacks adequate public oversight. And then he started to put some of his money into philanthropy. And everyone thinks, wow, he's such a generous man, he gives so much. But and I've done an analysis in the book, every place he gives to is his former future markets. I'll give you a simple example. So the first generation of GMOs, the BT cotton, the Roundup Ready soya and Roundup Ready corn, have started to breed super pests and super weeds. So now they're trying to get new GMOs based on gene editing and gene drives. In gene editing, 
by, uh, not only is uh, Gates financing the research, he has created a company for the patents. It's called Editas. So he will collect rents when the gene editing is pushed through. And worse, in the United States, half the farmlands are overtaken by superweeds. The most important one is Palmer amaranth. Amaranth is a sacred crop for us, we eat it.